Fate Likes to Play by Sierra Steinbrecher. Chapter 26. Wait for me. You are not alone tonight. Imagine me there by your side. It's so hard to be here so far away from you. Tuslis looked over her shoulder at the receding castle as the barrier forced her to follow Thanatos. She could still see light from Hiccup's window, even though it was getting late. I'm counting the seconds till I begin to bring you back home, make up for my sin. He stripped off his clothes and gently lifted the pendant over his head, but he didn't put it down. Instead, he got into bed and laid flat on his back, but the attempt at sleep was in vain. His mind was spinning with preparations for tomorrow when he would set out to find her. But he also couldn't stop thinking about how all this was his fault. I might be forever till I return to you. The gates closed behind her as the Red Death sealed her inside his castle again, and she looked back through the bars. The clang was all too familiar from the last time she'd been a prisoner here, but the feeling of leaving someone behind was different. This time she knew Hiccup would come for her as soon as possible and not wait to find out more information. Still, she could be here a while. But it helps me on this lonely night. It's the one thing that keeps me alive, knowing that you... Hiccup curled up on the bed, the scale pendant Toothless had given him encased in his hands as he slept sweetly, comforted by her smell on the pillows, left there from the countless nights they'd spent together. But without the weight of her scaly body next to him, his slumber was restless. Wait for me, ever so patiently. The moment death threw her into her tower room, she ran to the window and peered out in the direction of Hiccup, hoping to catch even a glimpse of the stone walls that had become her home. There was none, and she chided herself for thinking she might still see even the top of the wall. But she had to trust that she would see those walls again, that he would come for her. No one else knows the feeling inside. I imagine you smile as you tell me good night, because it's the sound of your voice that brings me home. She looked over at the scandally glad bed frame and imagined Hiccup sitting on it, hands out to remove her chain necklace so she could sleep more comfortably. She took off the chain and hung it on the bedpost before lying down and closing her eyes. It's never been easy to say. He hoisted the pack on his shoulders in the weak sunlight streaming in from his window. He tucked the pendant into the collar of his shirt and headed out the door and towards the kitchen for food for the trip. But it's easier when I'm on my way, knowing that you wait for me. He headed out through the castle gates and down the hill towards the village. He stopped for a moment to admire the full glory of the sunrise and hope that, wherever she was, she could see it. Have a so patiently. Yeah, you're everything I've ever dreamed of having and... She watched from her bed as the red and orange eastern sky faded and hoped he'd been watching it too. With his face in her mind, she steeled herself to face her enemy over breakfast as she brushed off the skin tied around her body and walked out the door heading for the dining room. She would face this beast that was everything Hiccup was not, knowing that the better half of her was still coming. It's everything I need from you, just knowing that you wait for me. He trekked down the path in the middle of the forest, the one that led to the coast. There was a flash of bright green at the edge of his vision, and he whipped his head around, only to find that the color had been the lime green tips of the branches of a pine at the edge of the road. He let his shoulders sag for a moment, but brightened when he saw a bird wheeling overhead. It was a seagull. What I'd give, what I do, no one I'm not 
not there for you makes him easy to find. She entered the dining room and successfully ignored her first host, remembering that one time Hiccup coaxed her out of bed with sausage. Maybe the next time they had breakfast together, she could try doing that. And no matter how loudly Thanatos sneered, she didn't look at him. What I'd give, what I'd be, anything to bring you home with me. And this time you'll stay. His hand slipped off the ledge of the sea bluff he was climbing down to get to the cottage at the base of the rack on the beach. He quickly grabbed another rock jutting out and looked down to find a better foothold for his prosthetic. He'd seen the big white dragon from a distance, so this had to be the place Toothless had told him about. He took a deep breath and took another step down. And you wait for me. Death still tried to engage her in conversation, trying to convince her to look at him. Finally, he grew tired of her silence and grabbed her chin. When he did, she knocked his hand away with a wave of her own. He drew back, roaring at her, but she simply returned to her meal. She would hold out as long as Hiccup needed her to. No matter what the cost, she thought as death took away her flight privileges for the rest of the day. Have us so patiently. Hiccup dropped the last three feet to the beach and turned around to face the man standing at the entrance to the hut wrapped in a large white dragon skin. He would not run away from this. He would own up for his mistakes, how he put Toothless in that horrible situation, even if he had to do it to her father. And maybe, after he had the apology out of the way, he could ask the man for his help. Yeah, you're everything I've ever dreamed of having, and it's everything I need from you, just knowing that you were.